Hi and welcome to Coach Joe's live Q and A's. Uh, and I'm Joe, and this is America, my good friend and assistant today. Um, she'll be helping me with reading the questions so that I can focus on answering them. These live Q and A's are going to be about your business and your career, and yourself and leadership development in regards to your business and your career, because. As a coach, that's what I do. I make sure I develop people so that they will be equipped, well-suited and rightly equipped to lead their project or venture or anything that they want to do with their life. So how these Q&As are going to go is mostly people should send in questions beforehand. So we have some canned questions um, whenever we have um, either answered when I've answered the questions in the chat or um, if it's just apropos. America, you can probably just also gauge, like here's a good question right now. Um, and then, but mostly if you're here live, then just post your questions, whatever comes up in terms of you, because what's super important is that the questions are specific and practical to you. We're not talking in general, we're not theorizing, um, I'm asking everyone just to keep them relevant to the subject. And like I said in the beginning, we're recording these and they'll be posted in the uh, in Club Coach Joe, the membership site. Um, and I'll post the link there in the chat later for those of you who are interested and not part of it yet. But it's a forum for people who, I'm work who I've worked with before um, for now. All right. So I think we're going to get started with the questions. So you can, you can post anybody who's on and you can post your questions anytime. And, uh, and if there's no question in the chat, we will start with questions we already had from before. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's one of them. All right. Um, um, so I think we have a person that wants to join. That's right, that but is, uh, it's not letting her in. Yes. She, so to send her that link. I think you have to send her the link I gave you. So someone is trying to get in and uh, we're trying to let her in also. But um, I think, again, another thing I'll just uh, point out is it's also important that you think about this year. Uh, it's proven that it's very hard to plan far ahead these days. It's almost like a five-year plan will be obsolete. Sometimes even a three-year plan will be obsolete. So I think it's be, it'll be really useful for you to focus on this year ahead. We're still in the beginning of the year. I don't necessarily know what you have created for 2024, but let this be a time to sort yourself out and get clear on that and ask uh, the questions that you need. All right, so um, I think I don't see any um, uh, any chats yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so someone disappeared. How did that happen? Yeah. Why? Why did person disappear? That is so odd. Let's see. Okay, and then I think we might have lost one, but it doesn't matter. We'll just keep going. Okay. And then we'll see if, yeah, there we go. All right. All right. So um, hopefully um, whomever fell off will come back on. Uh, but I think we're going to start with the first question. There's no, if there's no people and if you don't have an immediate question right now, we'll start with a canned one. But anything you can think of, post it in the live chat because then I can respond immediately. And, and again, for those who just came on, I am addressing career and business questions for this year ahead for you. Okay. So <clears throat> when you were saying that we're just in the beginning of the year, uh, so I'm thinking, so what are some tips for setting and achieving career goals when I'm feeling um, or stuck in my work or that I want to move on for other reasons? Okay. So it's someone who's at a job, it sounds like. Yes. Already at a job and they feel stuck and they want to move on, but they don't know where to start. Yes. Is that the... Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Hmm. 
Well, I think it's, it's certainly an investigation, but I do believe that before you launch ahead to what you want to do next, there's something about being at peace with where you are because you don't know how long it'll take you. You really don't know how long it's going to take for you to be in the new opportunity. And um, so, so suffering in your current situation is not an option. I think that's the, your first investigation. There's many different ways of doing that. Um, but I'll, I'll just, I am not going to hold back on that. I'll tell you already, like when I work with people, there, there are many different ways, but, but they all need their own routine and their own rituals. Um, I think most people know that meditation is a, is a prerequisite, is a, is a, is a have to with me if somebody works with me. Um, and then, uh, so meditation is one, um, the basics also, are you sleeping? Are you eating? Are you exercising? But after that, um, it really is you getting very straight with yourself and clear and I don't, sometimes people would say, you know, talk it out with somebody or journal. I'm not going to, I'm not going to diss that, but I do believe that there is a place, especially when it comes to something as important as what we do day to day, where we have to be willing to duke it out with ourselves. And I think that, um, one, you, you kind of have to bring yourself down and ground yourself first inside of yourself to even hear what it is that you want. So, so I think sometimes in, in, our, in, in wanting to move on and really not liking where you are, there's this restlessness, there's this anywhere but here feeling. And I, I think that's the first one to work with um, because anytime you're going away from, from something, you'll probably leave a lot on the table. If anything, you don't wanna burn bridges where you are ever to the best of your ability. Like you wanna leave well, even if you don't like it, you can leave the people that you worked with feeling delighted. They feel like they, it's a loss to lose you, whether you liked it or not. So uh, what, uh, because, because I think the thing with something like not liking where you are or being restless, that's that is his own bucket of friction that means that that trait that defilement is alive and well in you like it's 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 a place where you're like i can't stand this and then you'll make moves that may not have been the best one but just to get away from the feeling but aside from that this this characteristic of yours, this trait, will come with you, even in 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 the times when you're in a place that you really love. There's gonna be there's gonna be just times when you just you do, you don't want to you get tired of it. You're not you're not um, thinking things are going well enough or fast enough, and the best the best time to leave a job the the best time to change your situation is when you are just at peace staying or not staying like i'm fine staying i'm fine going um and and if i were you i would right now probably think well god if i do that it's going to take me forever to get out of this job but you, you really, this is something you do simultaneously, simultaneously. So it's not like you cannot look for new opportunities or have conversations, but know that the restlessness and the sense of it, I don't belong here is in you. Um, I wouldn't say regardless of where you are, because there really are some jobs that fit you better, better than others, but every, situ, every job you're in will at some point or another kick this up. So what you're saying is that you shouldn't suffer where you like you said suffering is not an option but at the same time you should just not run away you have to have some kind of patience when setting up goals but it, it, this is turning around and facing yourself 
This is turning around and facing the parts of yourself that don't want to be with things that you don't like. Like we let our voting on what we like and don't like, our likes and dislikes pretty much steer our entire day to day and our careers and our businesses. And then for those of you who are mothers, which is a lot of you that are watching this, you know that that might have been one of the first times, at least it was for me, when I realized that right now I don't like the situation when you have a toddler or a baby that's screaming all night and you're tired, you're like, I changed my mind, send it back to the factory. <laughs> and you realize that this is forever. Even a marriage, you can break up. Even there, You can leave pretty much every situation but I don't know any mothers who can leave their kids, at least not easily, no. like they won't. No. So bottom line is, just as we had to face ourselves, for those of you who are mothers, um, when you're, you're stuck in something you will never for the rest of your life get out of, if you're just a normal, healthy individual, um, we had to face a lot and grow up a lot, becoming a mom. And this is the same thing we have to grow up when it comes to turning around and facing everything we don't like about where we are and who we are ourselves. Because there are those of you, and I know you, who turn this on yourself. Like you won't do it to the world around you or your job or your boss, but you'll do it to yourself. I'm inadequate. I don't fit. I'm not good enough. You'll do that number, which is just as bad. So um, if the person is in a situation that they are between work, so it's not someone that wants to leave the work, but it's someone that is actually searching for. Asking for a friend? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what about them? So how do you um, create goals in that case for your career? Well, I, I think the biggest bang for your buck when you have a blank canvas or a semi-blank canvas, because there are constraints, I'm sure, um, such as family and kids and whatever else, but dare to dip into the bucket of I, if I could do anything or dare to dip into the bucket of what you think you can't do. So I've been flagging um, for a lot of, a lot of women, for, I'm going to bring up uh, women because this, I have a, I have men too, but uh, I'm saying this because it applies to half of you. Um, they end up in the human services functions in companies, like taking care of people, taking care of management, taking care of, um, yeah, project or people management. And historically, there's been less women in tech. And I keep flagging for that because A, Companies want more women in tech. Uh, the world wants more women in tech. We do so that we get on equal footing. And I think it can scare a lot of people. So my point with that is if you're in between, don't A, don't shy away from that, which would be wildly, wildly fulfilling. And either bucket, a bucket list item you've always had for yourself or something that you would have shied away from before because it seems too hard for you or, oh, I'm not that kind of person. I'm not a tech person, I'm not a numbers person because there, if you dare to go there, there's a lot of work to be had. For example, not the only one, but I would say that dig deep because here's your chance. Once you're in the next position, you're going to be given a lot of other things to do rather than is this in line with who I am and what, what, what my strengths are. Yes. Oh, we have a reaction. Do you have a question? Post it in the chat and I'll answer it. Okay. No, it's, uh, oh, I need to, okay. Um, yep. Okay, what would be a next question? What would be a next question? Um, so, there are people that have a work 
uh, but don't feel happy at their work. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a normal um, like feeling to have? Or the, could it uh, indicate a deeper issue? Um, like how? Yeah, <laughs> it does indicate a deeper issue, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, first of all, most people don't like where they are. Um, it was that famous Gallup poll a few years ago, where they anywhere between 60 and 70 some percent of all people don't like going to work every day. So that will tell you something. That will absolutely tell you something. And I, um, you have to turn into a four-year-old. You have to ask yourself, why, 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 and why is that? So why don't I like my job? Because I don't like you know, my tasks. I don't like my manager. I don't like my mates. I don't like the location of it. I don't like the terms. I don't like the pay, right? And then you begin to say like, what, like why, and why is that? Because I, and then there's a rule of thumb called the answer, the answers to the questions you're asking yourself lies six levels deep, six questions deep. So sometimes your gut reaction is, is valuable, but if you're gonna dig in and really find out, when you keep asking why, six, six questions deep, you could very well hit on on a core issue like you said a deeper thing and that is more often than not it will be an issue that is not new to you irrespective of the job you're in it will be connected to something like i just don't fit in i don't have what it takes some general idea that has little to do with the situation you're in because if you didn't have that you will just deal with the actual issues called hmm, i don't like my pay i'm gonna go and renegotiate it hmm, i don't like my workmates how come because i'll go talk to them like there is it really the issue you think it is because if you're not sure and that this often also happens, you don't even know. You're like, I just don't feel good. Like you, you can't even pinpoint it. Then when we go to look, if you look and it's still not doing it for you, you want to know that that's not it. There's another good meme called the problem is not the problem. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had, had the feeling in a meeting and somebody brings something up like, oh, like that. We don't like the donuts, type, type of donuts we have in the coffee room. And then you're like, oh, okay, fine. Let's look up new provider. So let's get something else. And then you get granola bars. Oh, these are no good. You know, those people who like, you can't please them or even yourself, like you, you fix it and they just didn't do it. And when, when that happens, like there's a per persistent complaint and you just can't satisfy the person, including yourself, then you want to suspect that that's not it. Because you really can express your strengths wherever you are. You really can. But it really could be that your strengths is not a fit for the job brain. That's very possible. I mean, that is very individualistic. So um, we have um, we have a society that many times there are some people that have don't have work and then some people that have work and they work too much mm -hmm. and get burned out. Yeah. Uh, so how how should we think about the burning out theme? Hmm. Yeah, burnout is interesting. Like, what is burnout actually? Well, I, I can only answer it from my perspective because I'm sure a doctor or a psychologist could give you neurological answers, but I'm going to answer it from my perspective because I'm the one being asked. So burnout 
is a function of not being present because you're so overloaded with worries about the past or the future, worrying about how much work you have or what you did yesterday that didn't work, how you can get fired. Like this, the amount of cognitive overload is very grating on your mind. And the brain takes up a lot of energy, physical energy. So, and, and, and not being present um, is also, a, it's way harder to be present if you have a lot of stress in your life. So this is obvi- it, this obviously gets really sticky mm-hmm. because in the lives we lead in the West, it's stressful. So what do you do? Well, you have to mitigate, but if, if, if we can, like I'm saying, like if we can take the, take the case that it, it comes from that overload, the cognitive overload and the cognitive friction that you're experiencing, then you can actually do something about it because that's the whole point. What, how can we approach this and deal with it now? What's interesting I find is you have to, we, we, we can create and, and, and set the stage for the scenario and the ideal scenario that we'd like, but back to the suffering part, but the, that does not mean you're gonna suffer till you get there. Cause you don't know how long that's gonna take and you shouldn't suffer anyway. Mm-hmm. But like, what can I do? What can I do now to mitigate this? And if I know it's about my inability to be present in the moment, I can do something about that. And also in the moment, there's nothing wrong. Once we get here and once we land exactly where we are in our bodies, doing what I'm doing right now, there's no worry, there's no stress. Is there? But I think a lot of people have a lot of problems with being present in the moment. Not on the only one. Yeah. Not, not only the ones that are in the risk of getting burned up. Yes. So how do you increase the presence in the moment? Mm. Well, I think so, sometimes there are many practices and many, many good tools and practices to take on. But in the beginning, sometimes the best thing to do, because you don't need another thing to do. Your, your plate is already full, it's over full, and your brain is full. Sometimes your best approach is just to start with abstaining. What can I abstain from that's causing stress? So simple things like don't overload on the news. Like the, if you read the news cycle once today, don't read it again. Or don't look for more of the same because it's usually kind of the same theme everywhere. Don't um, don't overload on news. Don't um, you know they should. Don't overload on social media. Don't overload on the news. Start to peel things extra away, so you can create some breathing room for yourself. And in that breathing room, in that extra time you're just created. Because honestly, if you take away social media, except for just the minimum, just check your direct messages. You know, just to we talk in a few minutes, not hours a day. And then you, you, you will get some time back and sometimes quite a lot of time. And in that time, you can begin to practice new things like starting a meditation practice or picking it up again or intensifying it, taking care of your body. And, sometime, and, and even in the new space, maybe take on the challenge of not feeling it, at least not immediately. What would that be like? Speaking of learning to be present, not filling it up with tons of other stuff, then what? Now you have the chance to actually hear, like hear something because in the, it, the, something always wants to arise in, the, in nothingness. Creation doesn't leave nothingness alone for very long. So something will come. So first abstain, and then fill it in, begin to fill it with wholesome practices. I got a, a, a long list and a short list of them, but I think, uh, I think you probably know 
the practices that you engage with that it'd be better that you ramp down on just the ones i mentioned i think sometimes you can help yourself but sometimes you need help you yeah need professional help right um, both when it comes to stress or burnout or mental health issues mm -hmm. so when do you actually when do you get help how do you know when you need to get professional help when you it's not enough helping yourself i think you should always have that i think that i i mean it ended not that long ago this master apprenticeship when you had you know a craft that was passed on mm -hmm. And you had to be with your master and apprentice had to study many, many years. And that only ended, I mean, right, with the industrial era, like it, it went for a long time. And I think it was such a great way to learn a craft from someone who was masterful to pass on the business, to, what do you call it? Succession planning for the master. And so I think find a mentor, find a coach, find a therapist, like, I'll just call it mentor as an umbrella word. But when I say mentor, I often talk to people who say, well, I've had mentors, but never a coach. Right? And I think some are probably fabulous people. But I do think that there's something to be said for some, somewhat uh, more of a formal arrangement, like you're part of more a structure so that it's not ad hoc or whenever. But it really is some, someone is someone is seeing you someone is watching your pro pro progress or lack thereof and also making sure you don't take a crazy left turn somewhere because that's mm, that that is the danger with quote unquote self-study that you don't know when you took a left turn that that there is an outside professional eye to make sure that am i am i taking the right steps now what if you start to practice something that you now learn and get in your bones and then it was really not a good thing for you to learn so that's why uh having a qualified mentor i think i think it's i don't think the time to get one is when you're in trouble but before right yeah. or any time yeah so um what self-care practices can help be the stress and recharge after work it's friday <laughs> it's a weekend mm -hmm. um, mm. Mm -hmm. okay well that implies that there's a separation and i i i I, obviously that's artificial, that's a construct, isn't it? We made up work week and, and, and weekends. I don't, I don't make any, I don't distinguish my practices from one to another, one day to another, like if they are what they are any day. Um, if anything, when, when a weekend comes, you, you'll be able to do more of those things that are, that are fueling you. Yeah, I think I think it's a it's a really good question because I've only usually I don't I mean I'll I'll talk about myself just uh, if it helps, but I uh, and so I will. <laughs> I had a definite shift for myself when I realized that the name of the game was to begin to remove unwholesome practices out of my life, and I'm talking about you know alcohol like a lot of people will spend you know they'll party and then spend half of the weekend recovering mm -hmm. and then going back to work that would not be a good way to spend your weekend for example um people have to decide if they're going to give it up altogether or just mitigate it but that that's one and then and then i also think being being very dis discerning about the media you take in, like I said before, even down to the movies you watch. Um, I notice if my kids put on a movie 
that's just not a good kids movie. There's no moral of the story. Like there's, it's just crappy and noisy. It, it gives me a hangover. And I, I want to say it gives them a hangover too. I, I don't know that, but it's just not wholesome. Like it better be one that did you learn something? Did it move you? Did it, what did it tell a good story? So I think that, I think it's a good game to play. Like what unwholesome practices am I engaging in? Uh, and, 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 and go scrub them. I mean, I, I am down to noticing where I'm, where like any, like any judgments, any, I'm down to looking at two things that I'm really scrubbing at a deeper level for myself and that, that I try to help, help others with, which is how willing are you to accept everything just the way it is until it isn't anymore, given everything changes. Not everything sucks all the time and not everything is great all the time, but how open are you to whatever is happening and not judging it? Like, like you're not voting, not saying this is bad, this is good. And really that's another way to be present. Like I'm here, this is happening. Clearly not my flavor, but we can still accept it. And then that's one. And that also comes down to the judgment, like, of any of the situation of people of myself and it is a trippy world when you begin to catch yourself and, and let go of that i mean i'm noticing how i like I, I you literally won't see the world in the same way because we're so busy we're so busy judging and voting and then when that's not there you have a whole different life all of a sudden So there's no difference. The, the, the short answer, there is no difference. You can just do more of the things that are good for you. Yes. And what things are good for you? Meditation. Um, Why is meditation good for you? Because it makes you face yourself. Because when you do it, all of those things that you can ignore when you're busy, come saying hello. And you sit there and you, you sit through the storm and the determination is you're not going to get up. You're not getting up until you're finished. You're not getting up. Like you're going to sit there until the storm has passed and everything about you wants to get up and go do something else. I've done enough. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm sleepy. Oh, I forgot to call somebody. Oh, you know, oh, I, oh, I'm so creative. I need to write this idea down. Anything to just sit with it. Okay, we have energy in silence or guided. I talk myself out of it because I can't decide. Well, then when you talk yourself out of it because you can't decide, you have, mo if that's common, Allison, you most likely develop the habit of indecision, of second guessing. So the automatic thing that comes up for you after you decided some yes, after you've decided to do something is the opposite. You say, okay, I'm gonna do a guided meditation now. And then, no, you're not. It's much better to do it silently. Oh, and then no, guided meditation. And then the whole time that you plan to use for your guided meditation is eaten up by this tug of war. And, but the answer in silence of guided, I believe it depends on how seasoned of a meditator you are. I think guided meditations can be very, very useful in the beginning stages. Uh, I did them myself. I, 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 I broke one up. I did every single thing they had and had a lot of but it comes a point where you're no longer a beginner and it's time to move on. And, and silent meditation really is the, what you want to get to. Um, it's not like you can never do a guided meditation, but the gui in the guided meditation, it's what's called samatha, which is really, it really is um, intended for to feel good. I don't know if metta is a part of it, but very much getting you in a good, calm place. So if 
if that's what you're thinking, like I just am using meditation to, to be calm and to be able to tap into like a loving, calm place in myself, then that is useful. But it also, it, it, it has a time limit. It has, it, it, it expires uh, on your path, like in your journey, because it doesn't, it may make you more loving and more calm, but it doesn't deepen your clarity. There are times when like being present and clear is never wrong, but there are times that don't call for you being neither for calm also is always good, but like, like meta or, or loving kindness meditation is not always appropriate. It's not what's called for in a certain moment. What are you going to do if you have a decision to make? Send love? Like it doesn't, doesn't apply. Uh, so I think you're heading for silent meditation, but guided is a good beginning stage. Does that answer the question or do you have a follow-up question? If you do, post it in the chat. Okay, what's another one? Or do you have one? Um. Yeah, so so if, if we go on thinking about like how can I feel better meditation, but also like physical activity, like other types of like when you say like take care of your body, what mm -hmm. does that mean apart from mm -hmm. meditation? Well, I mean, I think each person knows. I don't. Um, I mean, I, I really just think some moderate moving around is fun. Like, I don't, I don't think that, I think we, I think we, I think our culture overemphasizes physical working out um, because yes, being, being healthy is one thing, but being super fit is another. And is that, is that the goal and for what? <laughs> like my, 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 like my monk would say, like, are you, uh, are you in a job that is like physical labor? Like, do you need big muscles for, for your job? It's very pragmatic. It's like, what do I need that for? You need it to the extent of your body functioning. Um, in my world, if I were to give it percent percentages of the time you have available to you, I would say that meditation is more important and then take care of your body enough to where it sustains you and doesn't give you trouble. And I think you know what that is. I mean, I, I used to think that walking was for sissies like walking was not an exercise but i don't believe that anymore i think brisk walking is great exercise have the walking meditation mm -hmm. have you tried that i do it every day yeah and mm, yes it sounds so difficult it is it is it's definitely a very it's challenging and it that walking meditation is not necessarily going to raise your heart heart rate no. <laughs> because it's slow uh and uh, one i mean i think also you, again you need proper instruction for it um like how, how, there is a how to do it but the reason is good a is that you actually move that's good but b the physical body is such a good tool to practice with because if you, if you want to get present and your job is to notice everything that happens when you walk that's a lot happening you know your 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 hip kind of moved and then your knee lifted and like there's a lot going on if that's your only job in that moment so it's a good way to get present because in our in our mind in our mind it can get really messy it can get swirly and messy, but, and we don't know maybe what to focus on, but our bodies, we know exactly what it's doing. It's not, that is not nebulous. It's not up for discussion. Is the foot moving or is, isn't it moving? And that's why I, just like I said, peel away the extras in your life to create some room, like where, you, where you're causing mischief with yourself, like the extraneous media, extraneous alcohol, all of that, that you know you shouldn't be doing, it's a good challenge because it's harder to shed than you think. Because in the silence, guess what? Those things were silencing the demons. 
And when you create some room and silence for yourself, they are going to come back. Uh, and, and, and so sometimes with your mind is very, you can get, it can get very convoluted, but the body never lies. You're either raising your hand or you're not raising your hand. So, so peeling away the extras, that's why I don't, I don't think that mantras, uh, you know, like different texts you, you have to learn or, or music when you meditate or things you get, it gets, it gets busy. And the whole point is to not be busy in your head or distract you because all of that extra, again, may feel good, but that's not why we're here. You might, feeling good might be a result of it, but it's not the goal. And mainly because it's unsustainable. The point is you have to learn, you have to learn, I want you to learn to be able to handle life in any way it comes at you. And there's gonna be times, and almost at least half the time, sometimes most of the time, especially if you don't like your job, where you're not feeling loving and relaxed. You're tense and upset a little bit, low grade upset. And that's what I think you need to prepare for. It's not hard. To prepare for like downtime and weekends and, and vacation what we're trying to give you is tools I, I, like i try to work with people so that they have tools for when it's tough or boring or when you're restless and <laughs> i want answers or when you don't have the answers well maybe it's not the answers you need maybe you need to start asking really good questions if you're not getting the answers you want Look at the questions you're asking. Maybe you're asking the wrong question. I'm looking at the chat now. If you're not getting the answers, consider that you're not asking the right questions. Mm-hmm. I think that a good question to ask, because I know Allison, I know that she's someone who struggles with what the next professional phase of her life and her, the habit of should I, shouldn't I, and second guessing is having a field day with her and I and I think that a good question this is a question personal for you Allison or anybody who wants to take it on for themselves what am I not willing to do and some the answer to that question has a couple of buckets one bucket is it doesn't have integrity it's not my strength but then the, I think there's a lot of in the bucket where uh, the bucket of convenience, fear, judgment, I'm too old, I'm too this, I'm too that, I'm too dumb, too late. That bucket gets interesting. What am I not willing to do? What am I not willing to take on or face? If I actually probably capable. Um, and I should go look there. Because you don't want a lateral move. Like you don't want to be the same thing. You, 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 and again, they am back to the mentorship, a mentor, coach, professional, someone in your corner will make sure that you keep moving. Because you know how our, on our own, we can take a long, slow going at it, taking forever. Or we keep doing the same thing. We have a good practice, but we're not. We're not upping it. We're not, we're not only really stretching, we're just kind of clocking in doing it. And then we don't discover something new. We're not growing. We're not really figuring out the thing we want to break up in ourselves that wants to be broken up, whether it's convenience or addiction or fear or lack of confidence. Lack of confidence is a bad habit. Low self-esteem is a bad thought habit that you have been engaging for in a very long time. You might have had it your whole life, but it's not, you didn't, you weren't born with it. You just get good at it. Good at like talking to yourself about it. So when you, you talk about fear and judgment, mm-hmm. um, what is the difference between fear and judgment when it comes to this? Mm-hmm. Like, Well, I think judgment, I just, I just, like I had this visual right now where it, it seems to me that judgment is almost the shield 
that's your defense, kind of like what you hit back at, so that you won't get to and nobody else will get to your fear. Because why else are you hitting, lashing out in your head or at somebody verbally? It's because you don't want them any closer. Don't touch the soft spot. Don't touch the vulnerable spot. That it hurts. I feel inadequate. I don't want you to see where I'm weak. I don't want to visit where I'm weak. And I think that we use judgment as a way of feeling safe. We've decided, here's how it is. But when you get to your fear, part of your fear is that you, you're scared and you really don't know. And then you have to discover and be vulnerable and find out. And that could be especially scary for us who have reached a mature age and we're supposed to be you know, wise and all knowing and not, and have answers to questions like, why haven't I learned this? Seems like everybody else figured it out. Why didn't I figure it out? So, is there something that you think is urgent to say or talk about in these times? Mm, yeah, I think so. I think, so let me tell you a little, let me tell you a little, a little fairy tale, a little, a little story. Suppose, suppose that the, li like the life you're in now, suppose it is a continuum. You don't have to believe it. It's just a fairy tale. It's a story. It's a theory. Suppose that it's a continuum. And suppose that it, that this continuum does not end. Suppose that the you of you, the the spirit. I don't. I don't think it's a soul. I don't think. I don't believe in a soul. But I do think that there is a. Mm, I think your mind. I, I. I. Yeah. I don't think your mind just disappears. For me, it doesn't really make sense. I do believe that there is a continuum. Don't. Don't know how. But I do think that this little skin bag of a body is housing this mind at this time. And I think that, I do think that it, just like energy, you can't destroy it, you can only transform it, I think along those lines. So if I, if you then think like, oh, I'm here forever, let's just take the case. Let's take the case that you are here somehow forever. That might give you pause in what you do today. And if you know that, any like all good and bad deeds will go <laughs> none, of, none of them will go unpunished like will things will come around to you in one way or another because if if it just goes on then it's kind of usually how it goes logically speaking then you will refrain from doing certain things uh, and notably for example like i said the the like the judgment, and I think there's been a little bit in the world, people don't hold back their judgments and they just come out with it. Like the people, I, I mean, you see the discourse in media or politics, like people are being, uh, there's a lot of meanness, like meanness and coarseness uh, and not, uh, not, not, a, not a respectful dialogue. If people talk over each other, like it's not, it is quite base. And I, and with that, I'm not saying walk around judging people. <laughs> it's like you're fine as long as you don't say anything. No, wouldn't it be cool if you rooted out both of them? Like if you knew that, okay, so being violent, like in my, in my mind, in my thought, and violent, I really mean that like you can be, you can be everything from rageful to mildly irritated. That's all on this, it's just on a scale. And I have historically been, I am, oh my gosh, I am, I've been so easily ignited or irritated, just annoyed. <laughs> and it's been very interesting when I think of it on the scale, like, okay, it's just in the beginning scale of just being angry, like an angry person. And so if there's anything we can do, each of us personally, it's like, okay, if I don't, if I don't get to use thought violence or verbal violence. How am I gonna approach this? How am I even gonna stand up for injustice? Can I do that? 
without anger? Can I do it, you know, eloquently? Can I do it, you know, powerfully? Make my point, have an impact, and not use anger. And that's tricky because it's been very escalated, right? And now we're at this heightened level in the discourse where anything goes. People will say anything. And uh, I think I think that just there's there's no good ending to that. Where's that going to lead? Like all of a sudden, everybody's going to wake up and just be kind and respectful mm-hmm. after that? No, it will lead to a cycle of revenge in either thought, speech, or action. And it's tricky because it's not being a doormat. So I think maybe one more question, and then I'm going to start to just wrap up and say, like, uh, what's going to happen after all of this? After all of this, but uh, I'm going to remind you all what we do with this and what you can do next. Uh, any other thing that you can think of or anything you see? No? Okay, here's your last chance in the chat. Anybody put something up there? Um, just to wrap this up, thank you for coming. Thank you for always working on yourself. Thank you for being, being willing to fail every day. I certainly, uh, if I have a goal, I make that my goal. I can I try? Can I, did I, did I, did I fa- fail because I tried today? I mean, that's worthy. Like I tried again, whatever that I, I tried to do, rein in my uh, irritation and whatever it is. But I'm gonna do this frequently. I uh, don't know that we're gonna have an absolute regular schedule yet, but I will announce them, you'll know. Uh, love it love it when you're here. If you can't be sending in your questions beforehand and they get uh, they get answered depending on the time, but I really feel like somebody went through the trouble, I'll answer them first. And then we record these and I'm gonna post them in the resource library in the membership club. Uh, and if you're not yet part of it, then come check it out. Yeah, it's a free first month, so you can check it out and decide if you wanna stay or not. But it's a great, a community forum for actually talking about these things and your own development. And I'll post the link here in the chat after. And just be on the lookout for upcoming Q and A's or any other event. Anything for you? Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for assisting. Thank you, Thank you for being here. <laughs>